Hi, welcome to Sky Sweaty Record Review, the only new music review show hosted by a French professor after spending half an hour on an elliptical at the YMCA. I think I can say that. I'm trying a new intro. I don't know. There might be more people watching, more than zero, so that's exciting. And uh, today I'm going to be talking about the record Iridescence by Brock Hampton. Uh, I'm also going to start introducing the groups in case you don't know of them. Uh, Brock Hampton is a fairly newish, well, new to me at least, uh, hip hop collective. So there's like, I don't know, 13 members or something. Uh, they're out of San Marcos, Texas, kind of near Houston, I suppose. And they sort of go between a kind of grimy hip hop sound, kind of underground, and a sort of strangely pop song. Um, I have heard their stuff before. They're a rap collective, but they prefer to call themselves a boy band, which I think they're joking, but kind of. Uh, I would say that that kind of variation between grime and the desire to be a boy band uh, could define uh, the record, which, by the way, once again was chosen for its great album cover. Uh, it's like an infrared picture of a pregnant woman. Uh, it's a very, I don't know, evocative image, um, although I have heard their stuff before. So I would say that, in a way, this record from a collective lacks stylistic unity, um, which is one of my favorite themes when listening to an entire album for the first time. But I think it's in a good way, uh, because it's a collective. So you have a lot of different people producing, a lot of different people working together on this record. And in that way, it's, it makes sense that it has kind of this dual, uh, this dual existence. So on the one hand, you have songs like The Opener, uh, New Orleans, which is man, one of my favorite on it. It's got this really nice, dark, gritty sound. And I think with a lot of the hip-hop that I've been listening to lately, uh, and a lot of the techno as well, uh, it seems as though people are really unlocking the way to get the computer to make very unsettling, uncomfortable, organic sounds. You know, uh, things that maybe you could only achieve with tapes before or some kind of heavy distortion. Um, computers appear to be really heading in that direction. Um, and that's really well exemplified by this. Um, this song, New Orleans, has got this kind of drone, this buzz. Uh, although, you know, you hear Hip Hop Collective and you, at least I always think of the Wu-Tang Clan right off the bat. Actually, the production reminds me more of a different collective uh, production squad, the Bomb Squad. Uh, for Public Enemy. It feels kind of like, I don't know, uh, Public Enemy number one off the first uh, Public Enemy album. Kind of anti-music. And I love that. I love that there's people out there still trying to make anti-music. But that's weird because you have this anti-music, this grind, and this rap, and then you have other songs like a song called San Marcos, which is basically a sing-songy emo song about not knowing who you are and feeling alienation. Um, but it's not terrible, you know, I, didn't, I don't immediately skip it. Uh, I didn't listen to it all the way through, because I, I could do without the singing. Um, but it's not terrible, and it doesn't dominate the album. I would say it's, uh, from first listen, it's maybe 70-30, like the, the, the darker hip-hop stuff. Um, and some songs even have both of these things at once. Uh, an interesting example of that is a song called Wait. W-E-I-G-H-T, um, which starts off just a really weird syrupy ballad, and then like this mezzo jungle beat comes in, you know, super high fast drums, and then it settles into kind of a mid-tempo song with singing behind it. Uh, lots of interesting textures. Uh, it, it feels like a collective where there's a lot of different people together, but it doesn't feel jarring, and I think that's, that's a success. Um, I think Probably, you know, I, I did my traditional research, which is uh, looking up the band on Wikipedia and seeing what, what shows up. Um, something that popped up was a quote from Kevin Abstract, who is the leader of the collective, because I suppose everyone needs a leader in some way. Um, and the quote was, I don't want to be a queer icon, I want to be an icon. So I suppose that means that, that he's gay and he's out, um, which... I imagine will draw a lot of attention. I mean, there haven't been a lot of, or any, that I can think of, uh, popular mainstream rappers who've been out and gay. Uh, I've always believed that uh, that Jay-Z and the RZA were both gay, but that's just, I don't know, I that's a whole nother. If I ever become famous from doing YouTube, that's a big if, uh, I would love to get into a scandal and discuss that. Um, but. 
this is very out gay, and the record isn't about that. The record isn't about being gay. It's not about being from Texas. It's not about being black. It's not about being white, because a lot of the members are white. One of them's even from the Woodlands, which if you've ever been to Texas, the idea that anything good can come from the Woodlands is astounding. Um, it's not really about any of these things, but all these elements pop in from time to time. So there's a song called Tape, and I would say that's the most interesting lyrically. For the most part, the the album is kind of forgettable lyrically. It's not really clear what they're saying, but in tape, uh, Kevin Abstract starts off in a verse about going to a strip club, a male strip club, with his boyfriend and, and getting a lap dance. Um, but it's not defensive. It's not like, here I am, I'm queer, get used to it. It's just a, a part of life. And I would say that this record really exemplifies unforced diversity. Uh, racial, sexual, uh, not gender so much. Like the women that are on the record just kind of sing every once in a while. And I don't know their names. Um, but it has a really nice, uh, it's nice in that way because it doesn't feel like it's trying to be everything. It's not, you know, this is us, the album. Um, but it still manages to, to do a lot of the things that we're hoping for in terms of diversity and sexual diversity in America. One of my complaints is, you know, if you have a hip hop collective, you definitely want to have a lot of distinct voices. Um, a lot of the voices kind of blend together. Uh, there's one guy, I think his name is Jabba, Joba, I don't know, J-O-B-A. Um, he's kind of like a yelling guy and he's really great, particularly on a track called Jouvert, uh, which is a, uh, named after like a Caribbean uh, street festival. Um, misconjugated French, but that's okay. Um, he he's like yelling the whole time and at one point he raps about I don't know hallelujah I'm still depressed and he's got a real distinctive voice there's another guy who does a, a little bit of like kind of strained strained rapping but other than that uh, if I had a real criticism there's a little too much just kind of rapper you know just kind of unremarkable and when you have a collective that that's a problem you know you want it to be more method man and old dirty bastard than just inspect the deck and master killer um, for those of you who know Wu-Tang really well. But that being said, I, I think I am going to listen to this record more. I think I'm probably going to listen to it with my kids. I mean, there's some eh, swear words, but it doesn't really matter. Um, it's, it's, it's a very good record. It's got a lot of great, especially the grimy parts uh, in it. It works really well. So uh, I would say the best tracks to listen to are Jouvert, J-O-U-V-E-R-T, um, a song called Honey, which is kind of like a Eminem, early Eminem style beat, kind of like a bouncy beat with good rapping, and then the song Tape, uh, because it has the most lyrical to say, I suppose, about being a queer rapper. Um, no, it's actually not what it's about. That's, I just made the whole point that that's not what it's about. It's not about being a queer rapper, but it happens to be mentioned, and that happens to be the most interesting lyrical content. Whew, nice saves, guy. Uh, I guess I have to come up with my one sentence thing. I'm going to title the record. Um, a, a high quality collaborative rap album? Huh. Well, that doesn't really sing. High, high quality? Well, no, not forced diversity. Ah, rich, unforced diversity. Hey. There you go. All right, Sky. I'm working through here on Sky Sweaty Records. I'm sweating a lot. I'm lucky because there's this guy who sweats way too much who always takes the machine that I like, and if he's on it before, I, I just use a different machine. He wasn't there today. Um, but uh, anyways, okay. Well, good. Then uh, I don't know when I'll record this next, but until then, <laughs> stay sweaty. No, God, I don't, I don't have a catchphrase.